Yo, what it is, man? You already know who it is, J Future. I'm with the homie. Susie Ichiro. Not to be confused. Um, you know, this is the you know the first time I'm I'm doing a live reaction with the artist. Um, we gonna go through his catalog on his uh, upcoming album. Um, tell us a little bit about what kind of uh, inspired you to, you know, what what brought the series together and kind of what what brought you to the volume two and kind of, you know, the meaning behind what 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 did it mean to you? Uh, yeah, the the, the album well the project is titled album project EP mixtape whatever you want to call it it's titled Overhill Susie Overhill and then S U Z I Volume Two. Um, I'm from the South Central area, of California, or Los Angeles. Uh, Overhill is a street on Slauson or in my area of South Central. So Overhill Susie, kind of just like a play on like you know, not necessarily it being my area or like my shit. I don't own nothing over there. So, but it's just like me telling my story. You know what I'm saying? How my upbringing was in that area, where I come from, type of shit I seen. Just kind of like a. A nutshell movie trailer if you were to just stop by or want to know detail at least from my point of view so man, speaking on that man <clears throat> we all know um you know nipsey hustle and uh you know rest in peace um you know he's from slauson obviously as well um you know just talk about you know how was it you know growing up in that environment or basically you know in slauson like you know obviously you you know let it i don't want to tell your story but you know you're familiar with nipsey and obviously you know just tell them a little bit about your upcoming uh yeah a typical day you know i mean it's kind of probably like the boys in the hood movie or like minister society even though that shit was just, part of it was filmed probably in my area. I think most of it was filmed in like Watts and shit like that. But um, growing up, I'd say a little bit, a couple generations under Nip or like my father is from 60s and, or a gang over there. Nip is from the same gang, if you know, Rest at this peace. point. So um, yeah, he just basically kind of, not to say people weren't hustling or like had a battery in their back to kind of get, get it in like the way he was getting it in but I would say definitely since he came and went it kind of put a battery in everybody's back in that area just I feel like across the world really like everybody really knows no matter what color you can sell whatever you want and you can put whatever price tag on it as long as you like legally own it or you legally went about presenting this to the people you know what I'm saying so do you think that Shit was going on before Nipsey, like was niggas hustling, you know, selling, you know, shit out their trunk. Oh, yeah. Was it was it before Nipsey, or when he was just a product to the environment, or you know, that's that's just what you know, Slauson is, you know, and people from there are known to do. I mean, I've seen I've seen people, I've seen niggas hustling on Slauson or like on Crenshaw, or just in general my whole life. I wouldn't say he was the first nigga I ever seen like hustle over there, but I'd say. He probably, I mean, statistics show he the first nigga to hustle over there and kind of, like, save his money and flip it and put it in the right position where he could legally own that motherfucker. Like, it, it's cool to, to hustle on the corner and be known as a nigga to hustle on that corner, but what about if you hustled on that corner and now you own that motherfucker? Mm. He's the first person I ever seen do some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? At least from, like, a front row view. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas don't know, like, the same parking lot he... The same area of the parking lot and shit that he owned, he used to get harassed and shit by the police before he even sold his own CDs. He used to sell, like, bootleg DVDs and shit like that. Niggas I know who went to high school with him say he used to, like, well, I mean, shit, a lot of people was young now. I mean, younger generations now. But when he was in high school, they said, like, he used to be the nigga who used to burn CDs for people and sell, like, burn CDs. Like, when niggas had, like, LimeWire and Bear Share and Morpheus and shit like that. He was burning all the exclusive shit and then selling it at school. So he been hustling, you know what I'm saying? So the hustle in his last name is self-explanatory, but I'm not gonna say he the only nigga I've ever seen hustle. Like my dad's a hustler, a lot of my uncles is hustlers. There's hustlers all over the world. He was just the first nigga I ever seen really own that shit. Man, 
Ah, that brings back memories. Uh, you know, the, wire. <laughs> <laughs> the line wire days, the bear share. You know, you downloading the song. Oh, it's the new Fifty Cent, and it's it's Bill Clinton. Nigga that had Drake album four days ago before that shit. Can niggas would not have to wait to the release. Like nigga would have been had the album. I mean, this was before Drake. Um, yeah, you know, when like first, Lil Wayne mixtape era. Yeah, and, like. Yeah. You know, Soldier Boy, his whole come up was off of LimeWire, oh, you know, titling songs, the new Lil Wayne song or whatever. And then next thing you know, you hear, you. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's that's crazy. Um, man, so, okay, so we're getting into the album. Um, we going we gonna to react to it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rate the whole album. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do each track rating. Uh, I think I'm going to do basically just, you know, the collective of the whole project um, and kind of, uh, you know, and uh, leave it to y'all to decide. You know, you can leave it in the in the comment section what y'all think of the album, um, any critiques, um, any things that you like, you know, um, go ahead and subscribe to, you know, um, obviously this channel. Um, if you ain't subscribed, like this channel. And then um, that just brings it into you know, what you got going on, so, obviously, you know, you haven't been really in the, in the YouTube realm, and the, you know, the streaming world, these are things that you obviously gonna get into, so, tell the people, obviously, you know, your channel, you know, where they can find you, you know, upcoming things, uh, websites, if anything, or just merch, or, you know, just, just tell the people where they can find you. So on all streaming platforms, it's going to be Suzy Ichiro, S-U-Z-I-I-C-H-I-R-O. Uh, my handles on most of the social media platforms are Suzy, not Sushi, S-U-Z-I-N-O-T-S-U-C-H-I. He'll probably have it tagged somewhere in here. And then uh, my YouTube channel and my Twitch channel, if you want to tap in on the game and shit, it's Suzy, not Sushi, uh, all caps, one word. So S U Z I N O T S U H. I mean S U S H I. Don't play me, nigga. Know how to spell sushi? Okay. So, <clears throat> just give a, uh, the people a little bit about. Obviously, you know we on. Obviously, you got the music. Um, obviously, you talked a little bit about the game and um, what is your channel like? You you know if they you know go look at your channel. You'll do two page. You know what type of things do you think they gonna see on there? You know what type of content are you bringing? Uh, I'm just really gonna let you know a tour of my life. I'm just a funny nigga. Uh, you know, I'm gonna drop a documentary. It's obviously gonna be music on there, probably reactions, gonna get into gaming and shit like that. But all in all, I'm just gonna say content. It could be my life. I don't know, it's just gonna be random shit of what I think is appealing that I like to want to stream to the world. So, and if you fucking like it, you gonna subscribe and tap in with me. So, for real. All right, so, um, Let's 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 uh, get into this album. Um, you know, listen to uh, the previews of them. Obviously, if you like this type of you know music, um, you like what he's talking about, or just you know you enjoy the music. Um, you know, obviously, go ahead and you know you can, you know, what all platforms you on? Yeah, we everywhere. Anything that you, even if you was on fucking Amazon Music, Deezer, Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music. So whatever y'all, you know, whatever you subscribe to. Or... All DSPs. Okay. Okay. And can they buy your album if, you know, like on Apple yeah, Music or anything like that? you can buy it on Apple Music, download it on Spotify. If you got a playlist, you can curate it in your playlist. If you fuck with it, show love. If you don't fuck with it, I mean, it ain't things ain't for everybody. Leave it in the comments what you don't fuck with. Right. So obviously, you know, because obviously, you know, artists are, you know, they, they serve, a, you know, their, you know, their um, audience. So, yeah, if you don't like some, if you like some of this stuff, you know, leave the critiques in there. This is the whole purpose of this, um, to kind of shine a light, obviously, on the on the album and kind of this, you know, um, slept on artists um, and, uh, you know, just uh, see what you, you know, what you enjoy. So let's go ahead and uh, play the first track. He posted, wake up, lovely bitch, I'm lit Told Cuzzy I'm a drop, nigga, he told me this is it Radio drunk, still wearing your fits Old nigga still posted up, talking they shit 
I pull your sheet, man. Walking baby thirsty, 54th to Eileen Street. There was me. Mama sign your nigga, don't pay him fees. TNDs, we gon' see. Hey. Name all in that semen, fuck a bitch. I was outside with them Crips. Hill babies never slip, watch your lips. I cracked the safe. Half these niggas never ever caught a play. Other half never ever shot a K. Harassed by coons, faces pale, sun block your face. Right off Slauson House with that pool hole, block away. Joker coming, bitch, not today. Uncle P and Twinkie taught me how to shoot that thing a block away. Lil Shank green and pitch, dropped my burger, I was six over her F dog. Big Joker robbing licks back when Speedy Long was next. Change granny number 616, so answer that bitch like who is this? Joker son, nigga. Bitch, where are you? I thought you were going to get coffee in a bowl from John the Bush. Where are you with my car? I didn't even know you were taking my car. Hey, this is mom. Give me a call and you get the message. On the phone. Don't stop. That's the heat, bro. Hold on to your face. Let's go. What's going on? So obviously that's the first uh, track, um, you know. We heard your your granny on there. We heard your mom on there, and it sounds like a, a homie on there as well. Uh, what did that track mean to you? Uh, it's voicemails. It's the intro off the uh, off the whole project. It's gonna set the tempo. It's gonna let 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 the world know, let people know where we're coming from. Obviously, I'm telling you where I'm at with it. You hear multiple people. Knowing what I'm doing, well, me minus my grandmother, she wondering where the fuck I'm at, sliding around in her car. But like everybody know, I'm pushing the music, what I'm doing, what I was working towards at the time. So I just luckily had all the voicemails saved, type shit, or just not deleted in my iPhone. So, but uh, it's it's well, they all really my favorite songs. But I just like how it sets the tempo. In the preview, you can't really hear it, but it also is another uh, record that's combined. Both beats are by the same producer. The whole song's produced by Van Clay. He actually did the first and second record on this project. But uh, And Nip knows him. Nip went to high school with him, so it all make it full circle. And this ain't like a homage to Nip project. It's just really like, a, you know, Nip died the same year my dad died and Kobe died. So we really just kind of mustering all this shit together and then putting it out how I seen, felt, or how I wrote it. So... The voicemail intro, obviously self-explanatory. You hear the voicemails, but I feel like it set the tempo for the project. Let niggas know where we coming from. Okay, let's get into track number two. Dissing glasses, catching face behind these city walls. Joker left me in the streets, I had to shoot the ball. BZ Briggs, both fathers, kids getting tall. Apollo Drum, still my brothers, ain't no falling off. Armani got two girls, two baby boys. I miss Julia asking me by her toys. Mama's oldest, father's bravest. Took my pops back, 100, he playing favorites. Nipsey in the sky, go Freddy playing my playlist. And your name is stone all over this loss and pavement, yeah. Got my granny, saved my family. Kept it together while Kenny was out getting Grammys. Chasing hoes, Lord knows. I'm 10 toes, different bitches, same bros. Used to catch the bus and trap in the same clothes. Same back streets and alleys where you can't go. See, you heard a lot of influence from, you know, your loved ones, family, friends. How, uh, you know, some some niggas, uh, you know, crossed you. Um, what kind of inspired this record? Uh, this record reminded me of like dead, pre- 
dead presidents or like um, I don't really know what record it is. I want to say like Lala or something off of one of Lil Wayne's mixtapes, where the nigga say I used to come through on the handlebars. I flipped it and said like cash in my pocket, Nerf gun in my drawers. But like you could clearly see the visual of like a little nigga coming through on the handlebars. Bad as hell. Got my ass whooped twice because Miss Keaton called. That's how I come out the gate on niggas. Like, to start the song. The song is titled Ichiro. I also like that because it's like... It's not necessarily another intro, but it's letting you know, like... Even if you like the song, you're going to have to say Ichiro. So you're going to have to get used to, like, who the fuck Suzy Ichiro is. Because it's like... The name of the song is Ichiro. I'm telling you, like, bar for bar, literally, like... Who I am and how I'm... And where I am now. You feel me? Was there any particular nigga that felt like you, you know, that kind of did you wrong or, you know, because I, obviously I, I heard that in the record as well. Or was it just like, you know, was there one particular instance or was it just like certain niggas that, you know, came in your life and, and kind of, you know, left abruptly because of a situation? You know, like. Honestly, it ain't even, like, it ain't, I don't feel like nobody really did me wrong. I think the whole tick of it was, also at the time, I was, like, my father was in the hospital, so I was writing a lot of this shit, like, sitting in the hospital with my father, so when when you in the hospital for, like, a long time with somebody, like, once it be, like, four or five in the morning, you be, you know what I'm saying, niggas is doing other shit, like, females is doing other shit, like, niggas is, like, if you think about it, it's five in the fucking morning, three, four in the morning, like, Niggas is either like with their girls or they eating and sleep. Niggas ain't worried about what you doing, basically. So I was kind of speaking on it from that space of like being there with my father and then just me and him being there and seeing like, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas ain't really going to be there for you when this push come and shove and time to be there for you because I'm witnessing it, you feel me? So I think, and then the way I delivered it kind of is if you would think I, like a nigga like you or listeners are going to think like, oh, he talking about somebody dirting him. That shit, that's just was how I was able to like capture the vibe from what I, what I was dealing with at the time. So. Okay, okay. At least in that portion of the song. Yeah. All right, let's get into the the third. Tr- or and that's produced by Van Clay too. So first two records produced by Van Clay. Let's get into the third track, Earthworm Jim. Earthworm Jim. Homies beating on this bitch Broke her steering wheel, grabbed her wrist Parking lot of golden bird while I piss I'm like five to six, pops driving loaded Windows down, I'm cold as fuck Thinking back so we could sober up Steps are growing up These niggas knew that I was blowing up Niggas gold in they mouth, smile rotten Bang for colors, shoot each other, slangin' cotton A tourist ain't gon' go for bullshit And stubborn nigga posted, pointing out your problems Blanco in this bitch, let me pop my shit I just strolling on my old bitches begging me to hit Damn, no rewind to skip Earthworm Jim tripping, cousin Devin coming fix to the pit Joker pulling up and screaming 60 crits Snatch controller, press and move over just so that he could sit Chronic aroma plus liquor on them pops gon' get me lit Granny went out, mom sleeping, nobody saying shit If mama wake up, then I ain't playing shit I know I'll catch bar for bar, then I know I was saying shit Fast forward stock, he's assemblies where I'm gon' meet with Nip Earthworm Jimmy was my nigga before I need a bitch Before my balls dropped Me and Nino still in calling Duke and Mall Cops When Devin had a ball spot Taught me niggas capping they rapping dreams is a long shot You live and dying in your own box uh, Midnight club addictions, my whole life was in the whip All white cobalt gold rims on that bitch Way before I built bars on my Nas shit I built stats trying to rank up to a Nas kid Dustin niggas and the cinnamon is still the same When I go nuts, go nuts, reef Homies beating okay. So With that track um, Obviously another another mention of Nip um, But uh, what kind of inspired that record And the title as well Earthward and Jim Well, kind of- uh on some weird shit like my one of my best friends Bakari Bills the nigga who produced the beat he made that beat probably like two three years ago for me maybe even longer and the way I got it doesn't matter like I wanted the beat really bad I had one of my niggas in the studio Bills kept telling me like oh bro it's not mixed down yet it ain't ready and I was just thirsty for the fucking beat. So I got the beat from the nigga to where he wasn't tripping. And I made a record of, I've already made a song of it earlier. And my dad liked the song. 
and basically I just like after he passed away I stripped the, like that whole song and just went in completely again feel me Earthworm Jim I don't really know if a lot of you know who that is that's a like cartoon character that's like one of my favorite cartoon characters when I was a kid it's the fucking earthworm in a fucking spacesuit who's <laughs> like really not even doing nothing that cool but like I remember on Sega Genesis I really rap about it in here like I used to be playing that shit Everybody was really on like Sonic and like yeah, shit like shit. that. The real shit. So I wanted to do something else. So that's why I, I liked Earthworm Jim. So that's why I named the song. I mean, I never really heard nobody else shout that nigga out. So yeah, I mean, it it sounds familiar, Earthworm Jim. But I everybody mean, in the comments put if you know who Earthworm Jim is or look that nigga up. I was me. a I was a Sonic nigga, so. Um, shit, you know, I'm trying to beat that game, you know, I had the Sega, my dad had the Sega, so shit, we had, you know, hella games, but nigga Sonic was, was that one, um, but, um, I mean, that kind of goes back to, like, you saying, like, it kind of coincides with even your, your cover, you know, um, it all kind of coincides together because obviously, you know, you speaking of shit that you grew up with and you got a photo of, um, you know, you as a kid. Um, I mean, what was that moment? Well, I mean, the why cover? was that moment? Yeah, like, why why did you choose Bro, that? Bro, because <clears throat> if you look at my facial expression, <clears throat> I don't know, like, when, when you're in elementary school, like, you know, like, you got the gifted program. You got student of the month and shit. <clears throat> I never won that shit. I was always bad. And this one time in particular, but I was a spoiled-ass kid. This one time in particular, I won. So if you look at my facial expression, like, it damn near looked like a mugshot. Like, I don't even believe this shit real with the whole damn certificate in my hand. <laughs> like, I don't even think this shit is real. I think I'm, like, waiting for Ashton Kutcher or some shit to come out. So I just feel like the whole me being a light-skinned, mixed black boy, you know what I'm saying? I look bad as fuck in this picture, but I got a student of the month fucking thing in my hand. It's like it's not a mugshot. It ain't nothing that bad. It just is like the whole play on like being misunderstood. And also, this the this, the school, the elementary school I went to is right off of Slauson. It's 54th Street Elementary School. If you didn't go there, you probably went to 58th or some other shit, but like... This some real overhill baby shit. Like, this some real Slauson baby shit. Mind you, if you really looking into shit, my shirt is a North Carolina t-shirt. My So my dad really got me dressed on some fly shit. I got on a vintage North Carolina t-shirt. You could tell I'm really a little young Slauson nigga. So, that kind of hits home for me um, with the North Carolina shit. Because my dad was from, uh, he's from North Carolina. Um... Which is crazy. I didn't even realize it um, that you had that shirt on. Um, why did you, you? Do you know why he put you in that shirt? Like why? I okay, think, it's I think that shit has something to do with being from '60s, like <clears throat> North Carolina neighborhood crib. Their colors is baby blue. Their 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 uh their logos are Tar Heel. The section of the of the hood that my dad was from was Overhill. So it's probably just like a. Some shit niggas flipped, you know what I'm saying? Either way, I liked it. Like, I North Carolina Colors was my favorite shit. Like, it's all fucking conditioned in my brain at this point. Okay. But another thing I want to hand out, too, is, like, if you really listening to the music, you could clearly hear, hear, like, I'm really chopping with niggas. Like, I'm not. This ain't, like, bubblegummy and melodic, which ain't no knock to bubblegum and melodic. If you listen to most of the songs, I'm being melodic, too. I'm just saying you could clearly comprehend and listen that I got something to say. Like, I'm actually really speaking about some shit every word counts type shit yeah i mean i'm gonna get my overall review after um but yeah i mean you could really tell that obviously you know um it ain't just you know dropping a record uh you really put some thought into it so um yeah i mean obviously you could you could tell on that so um let's get into the next one uh pachula pachulia pachulia okay Let's get into it. Different. I'ma say we're stuck outside of the kitchen. Talk to my bitch like which bitch we picking. Phone won't shut up, but I don't pay attention. Get back to the mission. Tequila, no chase. Bitches throwaways. Took some shorts and floats today. Fucking tell the bitch go away. But Julia. Two bitches kissing and cooking for me. But Julia rolled in a leaf. Secrets that we can't speak. 
This is the Cooper Pack, I power three. Sliding into something expensive. Your bitch is behind that rent. Got a hoodie, I'm slurring, I'm big. Okay. So, Petulia. Let me uh let me let me clarify for a lot of people that don't because the shit crazy like how the whole song came about like Petulia is like with hippies it's like you know how you got Francis and Murr and like uh Sage and shit like that. Okay. Petulia is one of them things hippies light in the air like to get the energy right, you know what I'm saying? And it has a okay. lot to do with weed. Now, me personally I was talking from a place of speaking about like, uh, okay, I wanted to say, Z niggas say Zaza is like exotic weed, obviously exotic, Zaza, whatever. Okay. So Zaza Pachulia, which was what I was trying to do, is a player from the NBA who really ain't a really <laughs> a nigga, you feel me? <laughs> but his last name is Pachulia. So I just record the whole record and shit, you feel me? I'm talking about like how a monogamous, I'm talking about having a monogamous relationship, having two different women who both are down to kiss and cook and, like, be with me. Have I done that shit? I got a girl now, so I'm not going to really speak on it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm rapping like you can clearly tell. It's see, you can see the vision. feel me? So, okay. But okay. the funny thing is, like, Pachulia, mind you, I told you, I was making the song, like, on some, like, Pachulia, exotic weed, smoking weed, monogamous relationship. The girl's like a flower to me. Pachulia really means flower, and I didn't know that shit till after I made the song. So that's how you know sometimes you got to just kind of go with your gut feeling. Like, I had an idea. I went through and all the way with that shit and executed. After I recorded and mixed and mastered the shit, I'm looking into my history of what I did. Like, what does Pachulia mean? The shit really meant flower, and I didn't even know that till I made it. You feel me? So. Okay. So you ain't know at the time, but... I clearly, I must have or something. It was on some weird shit. Like, like a lot of hippies be telling me, like, I love that Pachulia record. You know, like, Francis and Murray Pachulia. I be like, damn, nigga, I hit home on exactly what the fuck I was trying to, to do. He stepped on my shit. You didn't know at that time, but God did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sound like. Um, so, um, yeah. I mean, so what it sounds like is you didn't, you made the song. And you realize, like, kind of the meaning and kind of what you wanted to title the track after you made it. You oh, didn't God go into it oh, my, saying, oh. like, oh, okay, this is going to be Pachulia. I'm going to say Pachulia a couple times through it. So it, it kind of coincides. It's just all kind of. I was like, damn, it's exactly what I thought it meant. That's how you know you got to read them books. You got to be smart in school because you, you never know what words is going to stick. And later on, you're going to use them shits. And it's because you already know what the hell it was. It was this uh, record's produced by Moe's too, Code Game Moe's. He's based out of New York. Shout out to my nigga Moe's. Okay. All right. Well, um, <clears throat> let's get into Saucy House or Saucy House. Saucy House and this Saucy House too. The first Saucy House was on my first uh, project. Which was, after this, you can go do your research and check shit out. But okay. that, this is an eating place on Overhill and Slauson. It's uh, Asian food. They got sushi. Mainly people get like teriyaki chicken and like uh, tempura, shit like that, California rolls. But, uh. Okay. Let's get into it. Drip, summer rose chopsticks. Little Lucy Luke begging for the dick while my niggas sit. Covid coughing, can't nobody test my clip. Grab the coffin, big steppers in the vit. I'm so sloss and booty market, woody rib tips. Uncle Ricky picks, Pac Man in it. Y'all can meet you with my overheel, bitch. Dumb it down, LA County never changed. Niggas, so much your name. Fuck baby Mars, running house on 2K games. And her tacos bussin'. And I fucked her cousin. And I'm still fucking, even if she got her husband. Susie been thuggin'. All my niggas pushing all them lines, and we big stuntin'. Niggas still frontin'. What's your section? What's your buses? Older sister, let me fuck. Number 36, mama, bring me up. Fucking Asians call it Mushu Champagne Shower Lit. Chris Tucker, the movie, say the filter fish. Susie in the coochie, tryna kill the bitch. Sachi House, Susie, bash on film and shit. Bitch, I'm too legit. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So, what were you saying? Obviously, the music was playing, so people yeah, yeah. couldn't really hear what you were saying. Uh -huh. um, but, so, you saying, basically, it sounds like it to me, you just was at Sachi House, and and uh, that kind of uh, inspired the record. Is that... Well, again, you know, the the project's name is Overhill Susie. I already told you where we at with it, where, where the section is, you feel me? Sachi House is on Overhill and Slauson. It's one of my favorite food spots. This is Sachi House 2. I already recorded Sachi House, the first one, a while back. Other niggas in the area have also recorded songs called Sachi House. I'm not holding no, like, barred against it or nothing like that. Like, everybody can do whatever they want, and I don't own Sachi House, but I made the song first. First Sachi House, which is why I made the second second Sachi House on this project. And uh, if you listen, I'm really like hella Asian references. Chris Tucker movie, say Gefilte Fish, Susie and the Coochie trying to kill the bitch. Sachi House, Susie Bash gonna film this shit. Like, nigga not playing. We really talking about Sachi House, you feel me? And it's just a it's a place on Overland Slauson. If you in that area, you should probably tap in with that food. Fuck with it, get you a little... Number 36, spicy chicken teriyaki bowl with the uh, pickled cabbage and the rice and all that. But um, this okay. is also produced by Moe's, too. Okay. So he produced the uh, Pachulia record and this record. So you Did he produce the original Sagi House? No. Okay. Okay. No. Great question. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's get into Granny's house. I mean, we probably could guess what it's about, but we're going to see. Let's get it. Bumpin' Chapa Valley, block sided like my granny left. Did a U-turn, came back already. Used to help prep the meat, boss for the meat sauce when she made spaghetti. Broke the wrist, bunch of cheat codes, lamb with the chopper like I'm Tom Versetti. Niggas tapping their tail 12, then take the photo saying gang shit. Keep a flag, but don't bang shit. You should question who you hang with. Sauce is sliding, then I'm dropping it. Drinking 42, popping shit. I don't interview like Popovich. Crip leg, shut pasta dish. CPN feed the whole block. Then I finally shut the whole spot. Shake shorty, that's an old thigh. Roy Fish tell the whole lie. I look at that bitch and say, open up. She talk about that shit, now she choking up. Wait, had to hide the bitch, granny rolling up. Yeah. Grace, I got it from my granny. Taught me how to pray. pray. Mama bring the family to my granny house. Okay. 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 Um. <clears throat> I mean, who did the hook? Cause I, I felt like I probably could add a little more sauce to the hook. You hear me? Um, Clay <laughs> Dub, my homie Clay Dub did that hook for me. He also did the background vocals on Ichiro. And, okay. Uh, and it's also a feature on Earthworm Jim, my boy, pretty boy Blanco, from the West Side. And on um, Sachi House and Granny House, we got my nigga CP. Make sure I lift all my niggas hear their name. You know what I'm saying? But I, but Clay Dub did the uh, hook. You feel me? We went and then uh, you know, I fuck with the hook. Granny House is a is a song. You know what I mean? We just talking about my grandmother's house. You'll see a visual picture of it on my documentary when I release it on my YouTube channel. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we we've heard. Um... CP a couple times on the album. Um, I mean, go into a little bit about, you know, why you chose him to to be on some features and and um, kind of like how did y'all even come to, you know, collaborate a couple times on the album? Uh, CP, that's my boy. He had his own in-home studio. Uh, I learned how to really not necessarily record, but just like how to get into repetition and like sitting through mixes and like <clears throat> recording this shit all night. Like that's where I think I got most of my 
a little bit more boosting my work ethic, uh, fucking with him. He's also from the Crenshaw district. It's uh, weird. He lived on the other side of Slauson, um, on Escalon, which is on the same side as 54th Street School and shit. My granny lived. We both on Slauson. I just lived on the other side of Aviso, uh, on Verdun's side, like before we knew each other. So we both went to Sachi House, you know what I'm saying? We both, you know what I mean, been with each other in the trenches, so it only makes sense for on Sachi House, him to be on that record. And then on Granny House, he knows my granny personally, and he lost his grandmother and uh, his grandfather. And basically, like, if you listen in the record, he talking about, like, how he had to, got to live in the house by himself, and his grandma and his grandfather left him, like, $30,000. Come a little closer. $30,000, you know, to kind of, uh... To cope with what they had to leave him with, you feel me? They Yeah, he lost the house, but, like, we both could shed light on, obviously, living in our grandmother's house, which is only going to bring a more vibe to the song. If you listen to his verse, he really got a lot to say. Listen to my verse, I'm painting a picture of what I've seen and remember from my grandmother's house, so. Okay, so. And we make good records together. Okay. So, with that being said, <clears throat> Um, you know, how did your granny impact, you know, what type of impact did she have? Obviously, you know, every, you know, um, growing up as kids, you really don't realize like, um, what type of impact a, a grandparent has on them, on you basically growing up, mm -hmm. but you kind of realize that a little bit more later in life, like, damn, like. You know, this is my mom's mom or my mom, mom's dad or, you know, my dad's dad, whatever the case is. Um, you chose to name this record Granny, uh, Granny's House. What type of um, impact did she have, you know, growing up? Um, yeah, my grandmother taught me a lot. Taught me, like, how to have a good heart, treat people right, you know what I'm saying? Pray to God, like... You ain't got to be a demon at all times and just be a bad person. You know what I'm saying? She taught me how to have a good heart. You feel me? Uh, made me go to church. You know what I'm saying? I feel like in most households, like when I was a kid, I thought only I was, I was the only nigga calling like your grandmother granny. And then once you grow up, nigga, I mean, at least in L.A., most niggas call their grandmother granny. You feel me? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Like I thought I was the only nigga calling my grandmother granny, so I wouldn't even like calling her that shit in public. But... Turns out, as I grew up, like, that's a normal thing, like, in amongst uh, the black community or just, like, in general. Like, we, I'm not the only nigga calling my grandmother granny. And mm -hmm. uh, they like the kind of the commander of the house, like, you know what I'm saying? If uh, not in my situation, but just in general, I feel like, you know, if your dad or your mother isn't pulling the load as far as being a, a, a parent or, like, it's just becoming overbearing for them, most cases, they their mother or their father, if they if they cool and they and they can, they gonna look out for you. They gonna watch you. You gonna be with them. You know what I'm saying? You gonna eat home cooked meals with them. They gonna whoop your ass. Like that's at least in the black black uh, dynamic of growing up. You feel me? So, okay. Okay. I mean, and then the same thing in Hispanics, bro. Like my, I got an abuela. You know what I'm saying? Same difference. Like your grandparent, no matter what race is going to be a big factor in your upbringing. I mean, but some people don't got a grandmother or a grandfather, but for the people that do, I'm pretty sure they can agree with me. Like, they like going to their grandmother's house. They've been there. They was raised there. They're not going to do, be there disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to get into the, the finale. Uh, Versetti? Versetti, yeah. Okay. Versetti is like a... You can you could explain a little bit after. Let's let's hear the track and uh we going we going to see what's up with it. If I'm drinking 42, nigga, my pops should get 42. Pussy ain't popping, I tell a little bitch that I'm bored of you. CP gon' slice some more shorties through. These niggas got hate in their hearts, so it ain't no supporting you. If I'm drinking 42, nipping my pop should get 42. Yeah. Pussy ain't poppin', I tell a little bitch that I'm buried. CP gon' spot some. Uh. 
fresh off the digits These niggas is bitches Watch how they switch up and shoot from a distance Backstab I need me a slam Joker taught me how to speak Swore he was kidding them Sliding and creep, I'ma spin on them Sitting on chips, I put 10 on them If shot swap me, Chris shot hoodie, that's a copy Grew up with some niggas trying to stop me Stripper bitch with shit is finna top me Pictures on the side, these niggas not me What the fuck is you saying, little nigga? Up and down west, where the day went Naming the streets with the pavement We was on island and you wasn't playing, little nigga Chop a can of pimp and sit to jit Penny pictures, I won't pay for shit as real as it gets, roots are singing, used to wake me down. Granny hit my weed crazy in heaven, talking about grandbabies last days. That call me cash play, Subi's dirty, couldn't find an ashtray. Blue roses, what my dad say. More concerned with the. Okay, okay. so <clears throat> Versetti, it kind of wrapped it all up. What, what kind of got you to obviously. Um, you know, put that as your last record and kind of end it on that note. Um, what kind of inspired that record, man? Uh, well, Versetti's Tommy Versetti from Grand Theft Auto Vice City, feel me? That's Versetti's his last name. That shit sounds Italian enough to me. So, you feel me? I ran with the name. I like how the name sounds. Um, and as far as just the way it wraps it up, you know what I mean? I noticed kind of, I mentioned Nip and my father a lot in this project. That's cool, because I'm really kind of paying homage to all of that. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's just letting you know, like, really, like, you didn't really get to hear, it, and it's not a cool thing to really um, praise. But at the end of the song, I say, you know, fuck all that talking, I'm dying on Slauson. I don't mean I'm going to necessarily die there, but I'm just <laughs> saying, like, this is my area. This is where you can find me. I've been here since a kid. Take it or leave it. You feel me? Me and my grandmother smoking weed. You feel me? Just like I'm. You clearly just see the picture, and you you don't know what else is to come. Like I'm gonna do more. Like I probably got a deluxe version coming soon. Got the documentary coming soon. So it sounds like it's more to come, even though it's just the foundation of everything that's going to come. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But so <clears throat> with that most, being most produced that beat too. Okay. With with that being said, um obviously we going um get into obviously the the rating and everything like that, but um obviously, you know, you you mentioned um you know, the meaning behind Nipsey and kind of what he meant to you in the community. Um you can put that down. Um but what does um you know, a thing that you haven't really touched on, um, you know, what type of impact, obviously we mentioned, you know, your granny, what kind of impact and upbringing, you know, an impact she had on you, but, um, you know, something that obviously you haven't touched on, um, you know, that you've mentioned, you know, probably the most times out through your album was your dad, obviously, you know, um, just let the people know a little bit about kind of, you know, um, you know, just the impact he he made on your life. Uh, you know, that was my best friend, feel me? So, him, he was like the coolest nigga ever. And I mean, also, he was from 60s. So, I seen a lot of shit I probably shouldn't have seen. I hung out a lot, doing a lot of little kid shit that probably a lot of little kids weren't able to do. But all in all, that shit's what got my street smarts and like who I am as a person on 10 now, feel me? The nigga's no longer living. And, like, I already know what time it is and what to do. That's because he has such an impact in my life. Like, it ain't like I... He, he could leave and still I know what the fuck I need to do and what not to do. You know what I'm saying? So, he was a stand-up nigga. Though. I'll say, like, most most fathers should be like him. You feel me? So then when they leave, you know what to do. Because, you know, you're going to be your mom's baby forever. Like, you know what I'm saying? And your father always kind of make, make you tough. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a blessing, man, like, you know, if you blessed to have your, your father in your life, man, like, it doesn't matter how long it's, you know, whether it's, you know, some people lost their dad at, you know, a young age, some people at an older age, um, but it's ultimately a blessing to have them, you know, in your life, man, like, shit, you know, my dad passed away when I was, uh, what, like, 21, 22. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, 
I mean, it's a good story. Um, and obviously, you know, it's, it's dope. Um, but uh, wrapping this up with the, with the album uh, review, obviously we've heard the whole album. Uh, leave in the comment section, you know, what rating or what rating do you give it? You know, um, any critiques, um, any, you know, things you took from it, uh, any lessons, um, what impact did this album have? You know, how do you feel overall about the album? Um, for me, uh, this album is, a is a, is definitely a good body of work. Um, you know, it's something that, you know, sticks out, you know, cause you can hear, um, albums and, you know, it's, it's just, you know, a bunch of music. Um, I felt like every track really had a story, um, you know, uh, moments in your life that kind of impacted you. Um, you know, obviously you had a little flair here and there, a little, you know, just, you know, popping your shit or whatever the case is, but... Uh, ultimately, you could feel like obviously you put a lot of time into it, man. Um, you know, um, shit. What should I give a rating, man? I'll give it a, I'll give it a nine point five out of ten, man. I think I'll give it a nine point five out of ten because I think that um, it could have needed you know a couple more tracks. Um, Maybe a couple more tracks on, you know, maybe like a day, and, and you know, or, you know, a day in the life of, you know, Slauson or, um, you know, some other moments. Obviously, nothing illegal, nothing like that, but just um, just a, a couple more tracks that kind of complete it. Maybe like a, a, what they call them, like, a, what do they call them, like? It's like a, between the album, it's like a, you don't know what I'm talking about? Like a trailer? No. An interlude? Interlude. Yeah, like maybe an interlude or, you know, something. But <clears throat> overall, obviously, 9.5 out, 9, 9 out of 10 is a, is a definitely a great rating. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, what the series brings from here. You plan on dropping a Overhill 3? Is that uh, what the no, next movie no, is? we're gonna do Overhill Susie Volume Two Deluxe, and then we're gonna close the chapter on the Overhill Susie shit. We might do like a Gangster Grills or something later in life, but like okay. no more Overhill Susie after the Deluxe version. We're gonna do another project that's not even hip hop music. We're going to like alternative music after we do this next uh, Overhill Susie Deluxe. But you can look forward to the Deluxe coming out soon, probably before the end of the year, and we're gonna drop the documentary too so we're gonna have that visual for you to really touch and feel and see slossing in my grandmother's house and all that too so just bring some more meaning to you know the album basically is for what i'm getting from the documentary which is um something that i think every artist should do especially when it's a theme based album you know a grow up story or you know whatever the case is i feel like a documentary is something to complement it for sure and um yeah, I'm excited to see the documentary, man. We'll, we'll see what's happening with it. Um, but let us know in the comment section, man, what you think. Like I said, be sure to subscribe to... Go ahead and say your channel. Suzy Not Sushi. All caps, one word. S-U-Z-I-N-O-T-S-U-S-H-I. Sound like a toll-free hotline, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that shit that you don't care about on TV. Yeah, so uh, subscribe to his channel, man. He, you know, he's early on in his YouTube page, but he's going to be dropping a lot of content. So the quicker you subscribe to it, the quicker you'll be notified about, you know, new videos, you know, um, dropping new content, um, you know, new vlogs, whatever he has going on. So be sure, go ahead and uh, follow and subscribe to his channel, man. Um, with that being said, uh, let us know. Like I said, give a yo rating on the album. Um, let me know if you like this type of content as well. If you want me to, you know, um, do more artists or, or what the case is there. And, uh, yeah, man, that's all I got for y'all, man. Until the next time, brother. Overhill Susie Volume 2. Make sure y'all tap in. Bow. Tap in, nigga.